One of the really great features of the Wave Sound Grid integration to S6L is the ability now to load legacy show files onto S6L that included Wave's plugins. And by that I mean D-Show, uh, Show Files, Profile, Mix Rack, SC48, any one of those uh, consoles that created show files that used Wave's TDM can now be loaded on S6L and have the Wave Sound Grid populated with those legacy plugins uh, and their settings that you used in those previous show files. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I, I'll give you an example of that. I'm going to try to show it to you here. Uh, I've got some show files from that era uh, that I've used in the past and, and I'm going to load here. So if we move over to the uh, screen, you can kind of see that I have a show file. Uh, looks like from 2012 uh, in London, funny enough. And I, I've already transferred it over into, the, into a, a folder that I've created on uh, the system today. And now we're going to load that show file. So let's get there. Legacy and London. Over in the right-hand side, of course, you see the source file information. This is all the particulars about that source file, what it was created on, etc. We're going to go into config mode and just hit load, and off we go. Now we're going to get a couple of quick prompts here. One is kind of uh, talking about the lack of I.O. on the engine, right? We don't have I.O. on the E6 engines. Uh, where we did have I.O. on the engines in the legacy uh, systems. And this is just saying you're going to have to account for that I.O. patches or those I.O. patches in your new show file. So I'm going to keep that information. And then, of course, we have some others talking about uh, bus insert points and the MADI patching that we currently have on, which is not a big deal here. All right, so we move over to the plug-in rack. Uh, I'm going to go back into config mode here, and let's just have a look. So uh, don't be spooked by the yellow triangles here. Those are plugins that were that existed in TDM that no longer exist in AXDSP. Uh, what we're really more concerned about here is the Waves plugins. And as you can see, there's a whole host of Waves sound grids that have been created where those Waves plugins were in the previous show file. All right, so we're going to navigate down to uh, a few of these places to see what they have going on here. It looks like, uh, let's see, what do we got in drum room here? Oh, we, I, that was some equalization that I was doing on a drum crush. Uh, let's see, some H delay from Mike Campbell solos. You know, where we want to go here really, though, is let's go down to the keyboards here. I know in the Wurlitzer, yeah, here we go. So on the Wurlitzer, I actually did an insert chain. Uh, where I had three plugins involved. I had a, um, uh, looks like a, well, I can't even remember now. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's H delay, right? H delay, and then a stereo, uh, Iser, a stereo spreader, and then a reverb that I had balanced, uh, you know, so kind of doing a mixed uh, wet dry blend on there to create some of these really tight rooms for the world. So, you know, the thing to take note of here is that it's created a Wave Sound Grid rack for each one of those slots, right? Or each one of those plugins. Uh, so you have one plugin in an eight rack or eight slot rack for each venue slot, which will work just fine. And the reason we kind of do that is so we, we maintain your snapshot information. If you look here on the screen, you can see that two of those plugins in that insert chain are actually being addressed by snapshots. So, um, it's the first one and the third one. So like I said, we can just leave it just like this. It will work just fine. Uh, it, you know, it feels inefficient to kind of use a rack just for one plugin, but hey, that's the way it worked out here. If we wanted, if we get pinched for venue slots and we wanted to consolidate that, say we wanted to take uh, and consolidate that chain into one wave sound grid rack, we can actually do that. It takes just a little bit of work if you want to maintain your snapshot information in it, but it absolutely can be done. So here's the way we, way we would do that. We would go, or at least this is the way I would suggest that you do it. You would go to the, uh, the rack in the first slot, and then we're going to copy these plugins into that, into that rack. But we're actually going to keep these other plugins until we get the snapshot information moved over to it. Okay? So we look something like this. If I can do this right here. We're going to go here and we are going to copy this plugin. And then we're going to go back up to this slot and go here and paste that one. And then we're going to do the same thing for the reverb where we're going to copy this. And then we're going to go back to that slot, that first slot, and paste it. So now we've recreated that chain in that first plugin slot. Now we don't want to 
kind of move from here yet because we don't want to lose this information down here in the snapshot. So as it sits right now, I'm just going to store this in this first snapshot of the show here. And the important part here now is that we want to update this first slot in all of our snapshots. So I'm going to go here and, and just to save a little time, I'm just going to select all of these snapshots. And then I'm going to go back there and update. I'm going to actually add that plugin to all those selected snapshots and update it as well. All right. So now when we go from snapshot to snapshot, you'll see, oops, let me get back here. Let's go to this guy and recall him. So now you'll see as I go snapshot to snapshot, that chain is now there in all of those snapshots. So now how do we get our snapshot information into those other snapshots, right? Well, again, it's going to be kind of a copy paste, right? As we recall a snapshot here, we're going to go to the, the plugin that's got the snapshot information. We're going to copy it and then we're going to go to the uh, place where we've rechained and paste it. Right. So now that new that snapshotted preset is in our new position in the rack. All right. So it'll be a little time consuming for you to do it, but at least you've got all that information. That is certainly much easier than recreating the plugins from the get go. All right. So as you can see, all of it came right across. Great. If you look across the console, I've got my show file up. All the all the channels have come up just exactly like I had them in my D show system when I was using it, along with my Waves plugins. All right. All right, that's going to do it for the Wave Sound Grid tutorial with S6L. I uh, hope you guys have great luck with this. Please get out in the world and use it. Bring those old show files in, put them on S6L, and get to work on this new console. Uh, we really want you guys working on it out in the field. Uh, if you want more information on Waves or S6L, please go to the Avid website or the Waves website and pick up more information on either of these products. All right, we'll see you guys. Make it sound good out there. We'll see you later. Bye bye.